How does a frequency selective channel affect OFDM? Well, here we've got the typical picture of OFDM showing the different subcarriers. And here we've got the standard picture of a frequency selective channel showing that some portion of the channel will be propagated with full strength and some will be notched out. In this case, it's very common to put these two pictures together and to think that in this case, the subcarrier three would be completely notched out. But is that really what's going to happen? Or are we being tricked by only looking at the positive frequency values in these baseband plots? So let's think about this in a bit more detail. An OFDM symbol is generated by putting data into a sequence and then performing an inverse fast Fourier transform. This gives us another sequence which we can send in the time domain. We clock out each of these values in the sequence over a short period of capital T. In the frequency domain, which is where we put our data, the first element of this sequence represents the zero frequency, sometimes we call DC. Now, since this time domain sequence is discrete time, the frequency domain representation repeats itself. So this vector will repeat itself on the left and on the right. And such that this value here, which would be the first element of the rep repetition, the frequency that corresponds to is one divided by capital T. And that is also corresponding because it repeats, it corresponds to the zero frequency. And for more information on this, check out the description below the video. You'll find other videos explaining this in more detail. What this does mean though, is that this second half of this vector also corresponds to frequencies which are the negative frequencies. So we can either plot in the frequency domain from zero up to here one on T, or we can plot this second half on the left-hand side and plot this portion here of the frequency band between negative and positive centered around zero. And that's going to be convenient for us to, to view it in this way to understand about the frequency selective channel effect. So here I'm showing an example of an OFDM symbol in the frequency domain with the zero frequency plotted in the middle. And the data points are coming from a QAM constellation with 16 constellation points. I'm plotting the magnitudes here. So you can see that, for example, when the data is at constellation point 1 comma 1, uh, then it's going to have a magnitude of 1.41. And you can see the other magnitudes here, 3.16 and 4.24, which correspond to the different constellation points. So let's consider the specific case where we only put data into the third subchannel. In the top plot here, I am showing the OFDM symbol in the frequency domain when we only put data into the third subcarrier. And in the two plots below, I'm showing the output of the IFFT. It is in fact a complex baseband time domain signal. And to send this signal, we multiply the real part by a cos waveform at the carrier frequency, and we multiply the imaginary part by a sine waveform at the carrier frequency, and add them together, and then we send that signal. It means that we can think about each of these two signals separately. They are both real signals being transmitted over the channel. They are transmitted in an orthogonal way because one is with cos and the other is with sine, but importantly, they are both real signals. Now let's think about the frequency components of these signals. And here I'm showing the frequency components of those two signals. The, the bottom plot I'm simply showing that uh, although it may not look like it from plots two and three, when you add plots two and three together uh, in with the complex variable i, it actually does equal the plot at the top. So the plot at the top does not appear, does not have any energy in the minus three subcarrier, but the real component does and the imaginary component does. So it's this is the very crucial thing to understand in terms of how frequency selective channels are going to be affecting OFDM. Because even though we think we're only putting energy into the third, the third subcarrier, 
In fact, at the carrier actual transmitted signal, there will be energy also at the corresponding negative frequency in the real part and the imaginary part. So now let's consider the real part and look at the effect of actually doing the modulation. So here I'm showing the frequency domain representation of the real part of the signal when data is put in the third subcarrier. And we can see the sync shape here, which comes about due to the fact that each OFDM symbol is of finite length. And for more details on this, you can again check the details below this video and you'll find other videos on the channel. As we said, the real component is transmitted by modulating with a cos waveform. That means multiplication in the time domain, which means convolution in the frequency domain with delta functions at the carrier frequency. So this function here will be shifted up and appearing centered at the carrier frequency FC and the negative carrier frequency negative FC from the cos function. So now let's think about the frequency selective channel in the pass band, which is really where it is taking its effect, not the base band, which is where we we're potentially confused previously. So now I'm drawing the frequency selective channel. I'm showing it with a notch here. I'm showing it to correspond with a frequency slightly less than the carrier frequency. If, of course, it's mirrored on the negative side, equally distant from zero. So now it's clear to see that a notch from a frequency selective channel never knocks out an entire subcarrier. Here we can see this notch is going to knock out this part of the subcarrier, but this part will not be affected by that notch. So when these get multiplied through going through the channel, this will be the spectrum at the receiver end. And then when you down convert by again multiplying by a cos, this component here will be centered at zero. This component will be centered at zero. They add up, of course. And this is the resultant signal that you'll get at the receiver. So this notch has affected that subcarrier. It's got rid of part of that subcarrier. So you're getting half the power. And of course, there can be a phase change as well. Uh, but it does not, a single notch does not completely knock out a subcarrier, which is what seemed to be the case from thinking about it just at the baseband. So hopefully this has given more insights into the actual transmission of OFDM and the effect of notches in the frequency selective channel. If it has, like the video, it helps others to find it. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said before, check out the description below you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.